going for Frank. Keep it going. Thank you very much, folks. How you doing? Yeah. Me too. Uh, a little tired, and I apologize up front. I'm really tired of uh, from traveling and uh, tired of uh, doing comedy and uh, tired of staring out at your blank faces looking back at me, <laughs> wanting me to fill your empty lives with humor you couldn't possibly think of yourselves. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> great to be here wherever I am. I always love it when I'm here. And uh, <laughs> I've never been here. It's great to be back. <laughs> so a lot's happened, I guess, since I've been here. Uh, uh, the Clarence Thomas hearings, that was, uh, I guess you watched that, unbelievable, really, to me. I learned a lot from watching the Clarence Thomas hearings. I don't know if you learned anything. I learned a lot. One thing I learned is uh, I don't stand a fucking chance. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even call the committee to order. Uh, it's going to be a real short hearing. <laughs> Mr. Hicks, are you familiar at all with a video series called Clam Lapas Volumes 1 through 90? <laughs> all of them? <laughs> I can't recall. <laughs> uh huh. Uh, Mr. Hicks, are you familiar at all with a man named Manuel who works at the Show World Adult Video Parlor? <laughs> Manny! Mr. Hicks, they subpoena me. They subpoena me. <laughs> so fucking nailed. <laughs> you know, after this Pee Wee Herman thing and after the Clarence Thomas hearings, man, pornography has gotten a really bad name in this country. <laughs> And I'd like to stay for the record right now. I love pornography. <laughs> love it. Hours of tapes I have. People fucking sucking every imaginable position. Every type of woman being fucked, sucked. Every imaginable position. Hours. I love it. Well, Mr. Hicks, thank you for your testimony. I'm not sure we have a place for you now on the Supreme Court. But boy, you ever thought about becoming a senator? Come here, boy. Bring some of them tapes over here. Let's look at them now. Ooh, look at that. She go to that like a duck to water. Hey. Teddy, come here. Look at that there. Oh, yeah. Oh, you have that tape. All right, well, there. Yeah, look at that. I've never seen that. Ow. <laughs> that is my big fear in life, that I'm going to die someday, and my parents are going to have to come clean my apartment out and find that porno wing I've been adding on to for years. There'll be two funerals that day. You see my mom going through my stuff? Look, honey, here's Bill when he was a Cub Scout. Look how cute my baby is. Was his little short pants, his little cap. My oh, baby was so cute. Wonder what's in this box over here. <laughs> Anal entry, volume one through fifty. <laughs> the only guy going through the gates of heaven with his mom spanking him. <laughs> mom, they were on sale. <laughs> Someone named Manny called you. Oh, shit. Psh, psh. <laughs> Who is this Manny character? I don't know, folks. Whatever. <laughs> Lots happened. You know my problem? I figured it out. I watch too much news. That is my problem. I watch too much news, man. I can depress the shit out of you. You ever watch CNN for longer than, say, 20 hours in one day? <laughs> I don't recommend it. <laughs> Try watching CNN headline news for one hour one day. You'll be so bummed. It's unfucking believable. One hour of CNN. War, famine, death, AIDS, homeless, recession, depression. War, famine, death, AIDS, homeless, recession. Then you look out your window, it's just... Where is all this shit happening? 
Cat Turner is making this shit up. Jane Fonda won't sleep with him. He runs to a typewriter. By 1995, we will all die of age. Read that on the air. I don't get laid. No one gets laid. I'm writing, Jane Fonda. Will you fuck this guy so we can get some good news, please? I want to see a well-laid Ted Turner newscast. Hey, it's all going to work out. Here's sports. <laughs> Here we are now, entertainers. So what else happened, folks? The war? The war happened since I... A fucking war happened since I've been here. Huh? The war. First of all, there never was a war. Because a war, you see, is when two armies are fighting. <laughs> and Bush turned out to be a major demon. Unbelievable. Remember when he was first president? He was the wimp president. Do you remember that? Cover of fucking Newsweek. Wimp president. <laughs> this stuck in this guy's crawl a little bit. This guy turned into a fucking demon, man. We Florinda, not good enough. We run away. Too little, too late. We're having way too much fun. Come on, call me a wimp. Come on, motherfucker, come on. Hold him back. Those guys were in hog heaven over there. Are you kidding me? They had a big weapons catalog opened up. What's G12 do, Tommy? <laughs> Says here, destroys everything but the fillings in their teeth, helps us pay for the war effort. Well, shit, pull that one up. Pull up, G12, please. Cool, what's G13 do? Sears Weapons Catalog. Weapons for all fucking occasions. And everyone got excited about the technology. You know what's pretty incredible? Watching missiles fly down air vents. Hendrix. <laughs> Me and the ghost of Jimmy were like that. <laughs> missiles are going down fucking air vents. Pretty unbelievable. But couldn't we feasibly use that same technology to shoot food at hungry people? <laughs> you know what I mean? Fly over Ethiopia, there's a guy that needs a banana. Shh. <laughs> the stealth banana. Smart fruit. <laughs> we had a fucking war since I've been here. Unbelievable. You know, watching the news is what bummed everyone out, though. Because at no point, we all know now, could Iraq ever be, in any of our imaginations, a threat to us. At all. We know that now. But, remember when it was happening, the fucking news, they kept talking about the elite Republican Guard in these hushed tones, like these guys were the bogeyman or something. Yeah, we're doing well now, but we have yet to face the elite Republican go. <laughs> like these guys were 12 feet tall. Desert warriors. <laughs> Never lost a battle. <laughs> we shit bullets. <laughs> well, after two months of continuous carpet bombing and not one reaction at all from these people, they became simply the Republican Guard. <laughs> not nearly as elite as we may have led you to believe. And after another month of bombing and not one reaction, they went from the elite Republican Guard to the Republican Guard to the Republicans made this shit up about there being guards out there. <laughs> We hope you enjoyed your fireworks show. Boy, it was so pretty, and it took our mind off of domestic issues. <laughs> you know, Bush calling it a just war. I don't see the justice in destroying a third world nation from rubble 
into rubble. That's all we fucking did. We rearranged their rubble. See that rock? That rock used to be over there. Don't fuck with us. People going, uh-uh, Bill, Iraq had the fourth largest army in the world. Maybe, but you know what? After the first three largest armies, there's a real big fucking drop-off. <laughs> the Harry Krishnas are the fifth largest army. <laughs> They've already got our airports. <laughs> Who is the greater threat? My impression is Onion Head Terminal 3 is the guy that's scaring the shit out of me today. Of course, I fly a lot. So, okay, great. <laughs> You know, and the disparity of the casualties, unheard of in any war, ever. Iraq, 150,000 casualties, USA, 79. <laughs> Does that mean if we had sent over 80 guys, we still would have won that fucking day, or what? <laughs> One guy in a ticker tape parade. I did it, hey. You're welcome. <laughs> work, Tommy. How'd you do it? I pulled up G-12. It was in the catalog. It worked like a charm. I just don't get You know, the thing that bugged me the most was the bloodlust that everyone got out of it. You know, this bloodlust that came out of everyone, which I don't fucking understand, to be honest with you. Because, uh, you know, I was over in England. Who here has been to England to verify something for me? No one has handguns in England, not even the cops. True. Now, in England last year, they had 14 deaths from handguns. 14. Probably American tourists. <laughs> Call this a sandwich? I don't want any more fucking french fries. They call chips, we eat them. <laughs> the food sucks, case closed. Okay. You don't boil pizza. Sorry. Another plaid mass murder up in Big Ben. Fourteen deaths from handguns. Now, in the United States, and I think you know how we feel about handguns, I'm getting a warm, tingly feeling just saying the word. 23,000 deaths from handguns last year. Let's go through those numbers again because they're a little baffling at first glance. <laughs> England, where no one has a gun, 14 deaths. United States, and I think you know how we feel about guns. <laughs> I'm getting a stiffy. <laughs> 23,000 deaths from handguns. But there is no connection there. And you'd be a fool and a communist to make one. <laughs> There is no connection between having a gun and shooting someone with it and not having a gun and not shooting someone. Some of you probably are trying to make a connection out there. There is none. It's futile. Cut it out. Okay. Admittedly, last year in England, they had 23,000 deaths per soccer game. All right. All right. I'm not saying every system is flawless. But it's really weird. They have no guns, and yet they have a very high crime rate in England, which tells you how polite the fucking English are. <laughs> Give me your wallet. All right. <laughs> how do you have a crime rate and no weapons? That's what I want to know. There's a guy walk into a bank. Give me all your money! I've got a soccer ball! <laughs> Shit, Ian, that's a Spalding. He's serious. <laughs> hand over the pound! Hand over the pound! <laughs> what is the bloodlust about? Let me tell you another true story. True fucking story. Last year, I'm working in a town in Alabama called Fife, Alabama. Right outside Sputnenburg, for those of y'all who need a point of reference. <laughs> Anyway, in this town of Fife, Alabama last year, they had all these UFO sightings. UFO sightings. And apparently, everyone in this town saw these UFOs. Which really pissed me off, because when I was there, 
about 40 people saw me. But there was no advance publicity, no advertisement. That's a big market for me. <laughs> Lawsuits are pending. Anyway, they want to be down there to host their big annual Ricketts telethon. Okay, great, whatever. It's great to be able to give something back. Anyway, I read in the paper about all these fucking UFO sightings, right? And I get down there and I ask them what it's like. And this guy goes, oh, man, it was incredible. People came from miles around to look at them. A lot of people came armed. People are bringing shotguns to UFO sightings. Kind of brings whole new meaning to that phrase, you ain't from around here, are you, boy? Yep, they're little green people. We call them boogers. Seems like there'll be a point in our evolution when we put our guns aside. Don't you think that'll ever happen, maybe? Come on, UFO lands. Oh, no. Okay, kill them. <laughs> but I asked the guy, why do y'all bring shotguns to UFO side? He said, well, we didn't want to be abducted. <laughs> Thinking, yeah, and leave all this? <laughs> Dude, if I lived in this town, I'd be on my hands and knees praying for abduction every fucking morning, all right? And I would not be picky. Greyhound, abduct me. <laughs> I said, what do you mean abducted? He said, well, they abduct people and they perform scientific and medical experiments on them. Maybe we'll be lucky at some type of sterility dentistry program they got going. Maybe they come down here, castrate you, straighten your teeth, and split. Sort of a clean up the universe pack. He said, huh? I'll tell you too, that's starting to bug me about UFOs. The fact that they cross galaxies to visit us and always end up in places like Fife, fucking Alabama. Man. Maybe these aren't super intelligent beings. Maybe they're like hillbilly aliens. It's some intergalactic Jode family or something. Don't y'all want to land in New York or Los Angeles? Nah, we just had a long trip. We're going to kick back and whittle toe. Oh my God, they're idiots. We're going to enter our mothership in the tractor pool. <laughs> oh my God, we're being invaded by rednecks. My biggest fear. Last thing I want to see is a flying saucer up on blocks in front of some trailer. Some bumper sticker on it. They'll get my ray gun when they pry my cold dead 18 fingered hand up. And over in England, they have these crop circles. You know about that? These circles that show up? These two guys have claimed they've done it, but I think they're aliens, too. But anyway, really, they think aliens make, they think UFOs make these crop circles around Stonehenge, man. And I was over there, asked people what that was like, and they said, oh, it's incredible. People came from miles around. A lot of them brought soccer balls. Would you let the fucking aliens land, please? They might be here to pick me up. There are dick jokes on the way, ladies and gentlemen. Please relax. Here's the deal. I editorialize for 45 minutes. The last 15 minutes, we pull our chutes and float down to Dick Joke Island together, all right? We will rest our weary heads against the big purple vein trunks of dick jokes while sitting in our spongy scrotum beanbag chairs and giggle away the dawn like good American audiences are supposed to do with a slew of penis references. Okay, till then, I rap. Here we are now, entertain us. I smoke, if this bothers anyone, I recommend you looking around the world in which we live and shutting your fucking mouth. <laughs> Either that or suffer a facial burn, your choice. This is America, land of freedom. Now, how many non-smokers do we have here tonight? Non-smokers, by round of applause. because I have something to tell you. I really do. And what I'm about to tell you 
non-smokers is something you don't know. And I know that for a fact. And I delight in telling you this information. I love passing on information to all my brothers and sisters so that we can evolve and get the fuck off this planet. Now, this is for the non-smokers and the non-smokers only. Ready? Non-smokers die every day. Sleep tight. You see, I know you entertain some type of eternal life fantasy just because you don't smoke cigarettes. May I be the first to pop that fucking bubble and send you hurtling back to the truth? You're gonna die too. <laughs> Have a good evening. And you know what doctors say? Shit, if only you smoked, we'd have the technology to help you. <laughs> you people dying from nothing that are screwed. <laughs> I got all sorts of neat gadgets waiting for me, man. Oxygen tent, iron lungs. It's like going to Sharper Image when I die. <laughs> Man, it's really a shame it's that secondary smoke that stinks so bad, because the stuff we're sucking up, fuck, it's good. <laughs> Steak and potatoes, swear to God. Like mama's home cooking, it's that tasty, I swear to God. Must be a real bummer for you non-smokers. I never looked at it that way. <laughs> my, my mind's open, too, you know. We live in such a weird culture. Anyone remember this? When Yul Brenner died and came out with that commercial after he was dead? <laughs> I'm Yul Brenner and I'm dead now. <laughs> what the fuck's this guy selling? <laughs> I'm all ears. <laughs> I'm Yul Brenner and I'm dead now because I smoke cigarettes. Okay, pretty scary. But they could have done that with anyone. They could have done it with that Jim Fix guy, too. Remember that guy, that health nut who died while jogging? I don't remember seeing his commercial. I'm Jim Fix, and I'm dead now. And I don't know what the fuck happened. I jog every day, ate nothing but tofu, swam 500 laps every morning, I'm dead. Yul Brenner drank, smoked, and got laid every night of his life. He's dead. Shit. Yul Brenner smoking, drinking, girls are sitting on his cue ball noggin every night of his life. I'm running around a dewy track at dawn. And we're both fucking dead. Yule used to pass me on his way home in the morning. Big long limousine. Two girls blowing him. Cigarette in one hand. Drink in the other. One day that lifestyle's gonna get to you, Yule. <laughs> They're both fucking dead. <laughs> but what a healthy looking corpse you were, Jim. <laughs> Look at the hamstrings on that corpse. <laughs> Look at the sloppy grin on Yule's corpse. <laughs> Yule Brenner lived his life. Sure, he died a 78 pound stick figure. Okay, there are some drawbacks. <laughs> I'm smoking out of spite now, because you non-smokers, how much I hate you with all of my little black heart. You <laughs> say to some of the stupidest things, too. Hey, man, quit smoking, you get your sense of smell back. <laughs> I live in New York City. <clears throat> I got news for you. I don't want my sense of smell back. <laughs> Is that urine? <laughs> I think I smell a dead guy. <laughs> Honey, look, a dead guy! <laughs> Covered in urine. Check this out. <laughs> Just think if I'd been
been smoking, I never would have found him. <laughs> hey, that's fresh. Someone just peed on this guy. Cool, now we can enjoy the wonders of New York. Look. Ah. Ah. Someone just peed on this dead fellow. What luck? I know what you non-smokers are thinking right now, not because I'm psychic, but because you're so predictable, transparent, shallow, and easy to read. You're thinking, that's real cute, Bill, smoking jokes. Keep doing them, son, while you still got the breath left in you. That is my big fear in life, doing smoking jokes in my act and showing up five years from now. Good evening, everybody. Remember me? I was wrong. Smoking is real fucking bad, boy. No joke. seen people do that, man. Let me tell you something. If you're smoking out of a hole in your neck, I would think about quitting, man. Chew some gum, something, please. This shows a commitment I am unfucking aware of. Right there. It's next for that guy. I just can't stop. Gets worse and worse every year. Dude, you got a cigarette in your butt, man. Let me say one word to you. Nicorette gum. Two words there. Nicorette gum. Don't sit down. I'm Bill Hicks and I'm dead now because I smoke cigarettes. Cigarettes didn't kill me. A bunch of non-smokers kicked the shit out of me one night. I tried to run. They had more energy than I. I tried to hide. They heard me wheezing. Many of them smelled me. There he is. Get him. Oh, he's hardly moving. This is pathetic. Stomp on him like a bug. <laughs> Hurry, he's trying to get under the sink. <laughs> Let's kill him and pee on him. Yeah! <laughs> Here we are now, entertainers. <laughs> hey. I wish I knew one more lyric. I know, one sentence of the <laughs> Here comes a long do 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 do. And I say it's all right. Well, folks, drink up. Whatever you do, I don't care. It's all in your life. It's not mine. It's yours. I don't care. I had to quit drinking because I really drank. <clears throat> I was real pathetic. I thought I was controlling it. I was a weekend drinker. You know, I'd start on Saturday, end on Friday. And, uh, <laughs> so I don't drink anymore. I don't do drugs anymore than the average touring funk band. <laughs> comparison had to be made. I believe Sly Stone would come up in a sentence. Ah! Okay. <laughs> I don't do drugs anymore. I used to do drugs and I quit. But I'll tell you something honestly about drugs, honestly. And I know it's not a very popular idea. You don't hear it very often anymore. But it's true and therefore I think needs to be said. I had a great time doing drugs. <laughs> Sorry. Never murdered anyone, never robbed anyone, never raped anyone, never beat anyone, never lost a job, a car, a house, a wife, or kids. Ooh. Laughed my ass off. <laughs> Went about my fucking day. <laughs> Sorry. 
Now, where's my commercial? <laughs> Why don't I get a commercial? Why is it always the other guy that gets the commercial? I lost my job, then my house, then my wife, then my car, then my kids. Don't do drugs. Well, I'm definitely not doing them with you. <laughs> Man, you're bumming me out. Get away from me. Who invited Mr. Doom over here? Get this guy out of here. The guy by the dip. Get him away from me. He's bumming me. I mean, I've lost my car before, okay. Found it the next morning. You know, I don't think that warranted a commercial. I lost my car and... Uh... No, there it is by that dumpster. <laughs> no, forget it. See you tomorrow. <laughs> you know, drugs. I knew when that uh, government uh, little commercial came out, the guy with the egg and the brain, that guy, here's your brain, that guy, I knew we were fucking lost, man. I tell you, I've seen a lot of weird shit while being on drugs. I have never, ever, 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 ever looked at an egg and thought it was a fucking brain. I have seen UFOs split the sky like a sheet, but I have never, ever, ever looked at an egg and thought it was a fucking brain. Not once. I have had seven balls of light come off of a UFO, lead me onto their ship, explain to me telepathically that we are all one and there is no such thing as death. But I have never, ever, ever looked at an egg, thought it was a fucking brain. Now, maybe I wasn't getting good shit. I admit it, I see that commercial, I feel cheated. Hey, where's the stuff that makes eggs look like brains? That sounds neat. Did I quit too soon? What is that, CIA stash? I just cannot believe in a war against drugs when they have anti-drug commercials on TV all day long, followed by this butts for you. So I got news for you, folks. A1, alcohol is a drug. B2, and here's the rub. Alcohol kills more people than crack, coke, and heroin combined each year. So, thanks for inviting me to your little alcoholic drug den here tonight. You fine, upstanding citizens, you. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. So I'll tell you, man, if I were going to have a drug be legal, it would not be alcohol. You know why? There's better drugs and better drugs for you, and that is a fact. So you can stop your internal dialogue. Well, wait a minute, Phil. Alcohol is an acceptable form of social interaction, which for thousands of years has been the norm under which human beings have congregated to form society. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Your denial is beneath you, and thanks to the use of hallucinogenic drugs, I see through you. <laughs> Not only do I think marijuana should be legalized, yes. I think it should be mandatory. <laughs> I'm a hardliner. <laughs> Think about it, man. You got traffic behind someone. <laughs> Shut up and smoke that. It's the law. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was taking life seriously. <laughs> oh, man. Who's hungry? That'd be a nice world. Quiet, mellow, hungry high people everywhere. Just Domino's pizza trucks passing each other. Every single highway. Parades of Domino's. But then get stuck in traffic. All our pizzas will be free. These are not idle thoughts. There is a master plan. Pot is a better drug than alcohol. Fact, I'll prove it to you. You're at a ball game, you're at a concert, someone's really violent, aggressive, and obnoxious. Are they drunk or are they smoking pot? The one and only correct answer. Thank you. I have never seen people on pot get in a fight because it is fucking impossible. Hey, buddy. Hey, what? End 
of argument. <laughs> Say you get in a car accident and you've been smoking pot. You're only going four miles an hour. <laughs> Shit, we hit something. <laughs> Forgot to open the garage door. <laughs> garage door open so Domino's knows we're home. <laughs> now, if we're going to have pot be mandatory, we have to be responsible about it. I was not. That's why I had to quit. We used to get so high, we would call Domino's from a car phone. <laughs> Thirty minutes or less. Fuck you. We're meeting you halfway, dude. We're tracking your ass. Look in your rearview mirror right now. Pull the Chevette over. We were real fucking high. You know, and I'm not promoting the use of drugs, believe me. I, I've had bad times on drugs, too. Shit, look at this haircut. <laughs> okay. you know. One time, me and three friends dropped acid, drove around in my dad's car. He's got one of those talking cars. We're tripping. Car goes, the door is ajar. <laughs> Pulled over, thought about that for 12 hours. <laughs> How can a door be a jar? <laughs> Shit, I don't know, but I see it. I see it too. <laughs> Why would they put a jar on a car? <laughs> I don't know, what's that? That's an egg. <laughs> Great, we're not that high yet. <laughs> This turns into a brain, we're getting a hotel room. I'll drive in the jar car, that brain egg, that's way too fucking high. I've never seen, look, a UFO, cool. Anyway, this egg, this egg did not eat. Okay, I'm not proud of that moment in my life. But you know what my point is? God damn it, I knew I had a point. I just knew if I bullshitted long enough, a point would come to me. I've got that kind of faith. My point is, I was not a criminal when I did drugs. No more, you're a criminal because you're drinking alcohol. People who do drugs are not criminals. They might be sick, but I don't think jail is going to heal them. Yeah, thank God they caught me. Man, what was I doing ruining my life with that marijuana? I want to thank Bubba, my rehabilitator back there, showing me a better way to live. Boy, aren't you glad you're not home smoking a joint, watching the sunset, listening to good music right now? Boy, you got that right, Bubba. What a waste of life that was. Oh, I'm going to show you lots of better ways to live here around the house. I would not come out of jail wanting to do less drugs. I'd want to come out mainlining heroin into my fucking eyeball, all right? <laughs> and I was almost arrested one time. Scariest night of my life. Same night we were tripping, I got pulled over. I'll match that with any drunk story you've ever fucking heard. <laughs> Fuck your drunk stories. <laughs> and Paul, I were tripping on LSD 25, you might have something to chat about. <laughs> Longest night of my life. Cops were tapping on this window. We're staring at them in this mirror. <laughs> Fucking car. No, there might be a bunch of them. What are we gonna do? Let's put them in the jar. Believe me, it made perfect sense at that moment. Put them in the jar, poke some holes in the lid, leave them by the road. 
You'll never get us, coppers. Your cuffs won't even fit us. We're gonna send some little firemen to let you out. Give them the egg. Here's an egg to eat in case you get hungry. It's an egg, not a prank, okay? Okay. Bye, little copper. Bye. Boo. <laughs> Fuck it, he scared us. <laughs> Can I buy a smoke from you, dude? I'm trying to quit buying. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I live in New York City now, and uh, I tell you something, the war on drugs has definitely taken a ceasefire in New York City. <laughs> It's unbelievable. They sell drugs outdoors on the streets in New York City out loud. It's unbelievable. Washington Square Park. Heroin, heroin, coke, 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 smoke, smoke, heroin, heroin. Those guys bug the shit out of me. One day I'm walking through the park and this guy's walking ahead of me, passes one of those dealers, and the dealer looks at him and goes, heroin, heroin, heroin. I pass the dealer, he looks at me and goes, glue. <laughs> I can afford heroin, you fucker. I'm doing laundry right now. You know, I was mortified. So embarrassed. I had to buy some. See, I think drugs have done some good things for us. I really do. And if you don't believe drugs have done good things for us, do me a favor. Go home tonight, take all your albums, all your tapes, and all your CDs, and burn them. Because you know what? The musician made all that great music that's enhanced your lives throughout the years. Real fucking high on drugs. <laughs> Man, the Beatles were so high, they let Ringo sing a couple of times. <laughs> Tell me they weren't partying. <laughs> we all live in a yellow submarine. A yellow submarine. We all live in a... You know how fucking high they were when they wrote that? They had to pull Ringo off the ceiling with a rake to sing that fucking song. John, get Ringo, he's in the corner. Oh, look at him scooch, grab him. Hook his bell bottom, hook his bell bottom. He's got a song he wants to sing us. Something about living in a yellow tambourine or something. Ringo, Yoko's gone, come down, we can party again. They were real high, they wrote great music, drugs did have a positive effect. Okay, I'll tell you what else. I'm going to extend the theory to our generation now so that it's more applicable. <laughs> the musicians today who don't do drugs and in fact speak out against it, we're rock against drugs. Boy, they suck. <laughs> suck. Ballless, soulless, spiritless, corporate little bitches, suckers of Satan's cock, each and every one of them. <laughs> Sucking Satan's pecker. Suck it. Put that big scaly pecker down your gullet. We're rock against drugs, because that's what George Bush wants. <laughs> That's what we want, isn't it? Government approved rock and roll? Don't you want to be at a concert one night, look to your right and see damn fucking quail right next to you, man? You know you're partying, then you know you're on the edge. Fuck it, the quail monster's here, there ain't no coming back. We might be up till 11 tonight, fuck this. We're rock stars who do Pepsi Cola commercial. Satan's dick has many heads, so all these little demon piglets can nuzzle up and suckle all at once. Here comes a fella named Vanilla Ice. Here comes MC Harrow. Here's Madonna with two heads. Suck in Satan's becker. Suck it. It's only your dignity, suck it. It's only your dignity, suck it. 
<laughs> MC Hammer. Oh, I'm sorry, it's Hammer. He dropped the MC. I can't wait till he drops the Hammer, too. How about this? Drop it off. Good. I am available for children's parties, by the way. Some of y'all might have a young and coming of age and not want to go the traditional clown balloon animal route this year. Might want to look me up. Beelzebozo. Clown from hell. Ha, kids, it's Beelzebozo time. Tell me something. Who here out of you youngins has never smoked a cigarette? Come here, kids. What's your name? Tommy, Tommy, how old are you? Five, five years old, and you mean to tell Bielsa Bozo you're not smoking cigarettes yet? Come here, Tommy. <coughs> Hold it in. <laughs> Mommy! Nope, it's Bielsa Bozo time. <laughs> tell me something, who here out of you youngins has never watched a skin flick? Come here, kids. <laughs> See them? Them's titties. <laughs> That is your mommy. Come on. It's Beelzebozo time. Found from hell. Did I just put this in my mouth? Oh, man. Thank you, Bill. Let's have a microphone that 50,000 fucking road comics have spit phlegm into. Then suck it, Bill. <laughs> Are I the wise one? Are I the wise man? Suck the phlegm-covered microphone, Bill. Think of all those bad fucking routines that have been launched into this bit that you just suck on. Think of all the chicken McNugget jokes you just sucked down your gullet. Of all the Jack Nicholson impressions you just chewed on in your back teeth. Here I am now in a teen. Yeah. You know what I mean, though? It's just our never-ending search to try and find enemies to blame outside of ourselves for our unhappiness. And there is no outside, so you can't do it, and it'll never work. Okay? Okay. <sighs> like last year, another amazing phenomenon in our country. This is 1991, last time I checked the calendar. Here's what happened. And I know you're familiar with this. It's going to happen this year with Ozzy Osbourne. Last year with Judas Priest. You know the story? Two kids, big fans of Judas Priest, commit suicide, and the parents of these two kids sued the band Judas Priest. Okay, first of all, two kids, big fans of Judas Priest, commit suicide. Wow. <laughs> Two less gas station attendants in the world. I hope I don't sound cold or cruel here, but I don't think we lost a cancer cure with either one of those two gentlemen. There have been no delays in the shuttle launchings over this loss. Subtext, they were losers. But here's the point. Not whether you like Judas Priest or you have taste. Here's the point I'm trying to make. They tried to prove there are subliminal messages on these albums telling you to kill yourself. Let me ask you a real quick question, which, by the way, was not asked during the trial. What performer wants his fucking audience dead? <laughs> I don't get that. What are these guys in the band thinking? I'm fucking sick of it. I'm fucking sick of it. <laughs> what you sick of? The whole fucking deal. Touring, making albums, making $400,000 a night. Free drugs, free booze, stretch limos, penthouse suites. Groupies blowing me down to dusk. I'm in a rut and I won't have. Well, I see your point, but we have all those concerts coming up. No, it sucks. Unless... <laughs> Ian! Nigel! Come in! Oh shit, Nigel, get Ian! Ian! <laughs> Ian, come... Oh, look at him, scoot! Grab him! Hook him! Hook his nose ring! Ian! 
What if we kill the fucking audience? <laughs> Nigel, go get a soccer ball. Ian! Let's kill the fucking audience. We can go back to our day jobs. We can sell shoes again. Ian! We can experience traffic and living paycheck to pay. Ian! Why would they do that? <laughs> Why would a band fucking do that? <laughs> because it's not a band, Bill. Mr. Dressed in black, chain smoke, say fuck every other word out of your mouth, you cynical humanist. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> it's the devil. The devil. Really? 1991. The devil. Yes. Do you actually believe that God would create anything at all that could possibly harm his children, really? Really? Come on. Dig deep for this one. <laughs> he wouldn't, would he? Not a God that made sense, which I think goes with the territory being God and all. <laughs> huh. Isn't that weird? Remember a few years ago, as if you played albums backwards, there were satanic messages? Now they're subliminal. Isn't it nice to know Satan's keeping up with all these new technological advances out there? Picture Satan at Radio Shack every Monday morning. What new things do you have for me today? That's my impression of Satan. I only saw him once. George Bush tells me it's uncanny. Remember that shit? Play albums backwards, there's satanic messages. Let me tell you something, if you ever sat around and played your albums backwards, you, you are Satan, alright? Don't look any further and don't go ruining my stereo to prove a fucking point. Come here, do this. Can you hear that? Check it out, listen. Satan is Lord, Satan is Lord. Man, it's crystal clear. Check that out. It's like he's in the room or something. Oh my God, you're Satan. Ah! Satan, destroyer of needles, ruiner of stereos. I am Satan and I have come to destroy high fidelity music. You will all listen to 8-tracks. Ah, the deceiver. The deceiver, I'm killing me. Listen, folks, did y'all like pass a quaily around this month earlier? What happened? Hello? Hello? We're getting closer to the dick jokes every second. Trust me. Trust me. They're good ones, too. They're good dick jokes. They're great ones. You're gonna love them. You are. You are. I'll tell you, man, I just don't understand. I know the world seems really scary right now, you know, but, but we're gonna make it. We really are. There's nowhere else to go, okay? okay. But you know what? When that Pee Wee Herman thing happened, I'll tell you something, it really embarrassed me to be an American. You know why? I'm going to tell you something right now, which I hope does not tread on any deeply held belief you hold dear. I hope it doesn't, but I have to say it because it's true. Okay? Since the dawn of time, man has jacked off. Today, men are jacking off. And in the year 2525, we're floating around in spacesuits between planets. Guess what? <laughs> My recommendation to you as a culture would be to get over that. <laughs> I really would. I think it's the path of least resistance for you. It'll take a lot of pressure off your head right now. Because I guarantee you when the apocalypse occurs and all those nuclear bombs go off at once, one third of all the men in the world are going to be going, what was that? <laughs> Their shadows forever implanted against walls. <laughs> Thus, the human experiment will end. Dick in hands. God will go, well, I tried. <laughs> Let's see, I got seven days in April. We'll try it again. <laughs> seven days in April. That's killing me. Listen. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Even though I... See, that's the thing. It was weird. Even though I, I like... You know, it's a... 
Because there's a lot of things I think are totally aberrant out there, like these sex phone lines. This is unbelievable, these sex phone lines. I could never call one of those things, man. It'd be too embarrassing to call up some strange woman, and she's going... <sighs> <laughs> Your cock is so big. You've got the biggest cock. <laughs> I think I got the wrong number. I mean, lie to me, but stay within reason, you know what I mean? I'm not a fucking idiot. Closer to the truth. Oh, you've got a cop. <laughs> All right, I'm with you. Keep talking. Hello. I think there's empirical proof I have a penis. Join me. Hello. Is this costing me anything? Hello. What, what, what happened to our value system? You know what I mean? What happened to that? I, in New York City, they actually advertise escort services on TV. Call 970-SLUT and the girl of your dreams will come to your home. I got news for you. The girl of my dreams doesn't blow ten different guys a day. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Bill, get off your high horse. Well, girl of my dreams, you can't play connect the dot with the herpes sores around her anus. All right? I know, I know. Hey, hey, I'm an old-fashioned guy. Hey, hey, your mileage may vary, you know. I'm talking about the girl of my dreams now. I'm not trying to step on your fantasy line. What I'm saying is about what? Actually, the girl of my dreams would call me. <laughs> so simple. The dream would be tied like a little bow. Okay. Man. Oh, did I have a killer fucking idea. You guys like going to the movies? I love the movies. So I'm watching Terminator 2. Did you see that? Yeah. You know, I'm thinking halfway through that movie, there's no way they're ever going to be able to top these stunts in a movie again. You cannot top this shit. There's no way. Unless they start using terminally ill people as stuntmen in pictures. <laughs> Well, hear me out. Because I know to some of you this may sound a little cruel. Oh, Bill, terminally ill, stump people. That's cruel. You know what I think cruel is? Leaving your loved ones to die in some sterile hospital room surrounded by strangers. Fuck that. Put them in the movies. <laughs> You and your fake fucking sympathy. You want your grandmother dying like a little bird in some goddamn hospital room? Her translucent skin so thin you can see her last heartbeat work its way down her blue veins? Or do you want her to meet Chuck Norris? Hey, how come you dressed my grandmother up as a mugger? Shut up and get off the set. Action! Push her towards Chuck. <laughs> wow, he kicked her head right off her fucking body. Did you see that? Did you see my Grammy? She's out of her misery. You've seen the greatest film of all time. <laughs> Feel a little resistance to my fucking idea. Man, people are suing for the right to die. There's a book out called Final Exit. It's a suicide manual. Don't die for nothing. Put them in the fucking movies. All these guys on death row, don't execute them. Don't electrify them. Don't fucking shoot them up with poison. Put them in the movies. Okay. Not one of my more popular theories. But just do me one big favor. Don't ever ever say you love film as much as I love it. <laughs> I think we found your limit. 
Got a little fork in the road, hadn't there? Gee, which way's Bill going? I don't know. He's cracking up maniacally. Woo! One of the few guys probably in the country who thought Silence of the Lambs was the comedy hit of the 90s. <laughs> it's so funny. Remember reading the advertisement for uh, Silence of the Lambs? It says, your knuckles will be white. You'll grip the seat so hard. You won't be able to sleep at night. Man, I laughed my ass off during that movie. <laughs> your knuckles will be white. You won't be able to sleep after seeing this movie. That's the way I feel when I see Chevy Chase films. <laughs> Are there any questions? <laughs> Fuck, I'll play jukebox at this point, man. Stick a quarter in my butt, push A12. I'm here for you, folks. David Duke. David Duke. Put him in the movies! <laughs> Fiery Carcass, David Duke. <laughs> cool, that was real. His little white fucking head popped right off. I love it! Jesse Helms, put him in the movies! Jesse fucking Helms, man. This guy, you know anyone that far to the right is hiding a very dark secret. You do know that, don't you? Please tell me you understand human nature that well. Please tell me. Tell me you understand human nature that well. Anyone that fucking far to the right is hiding a very, very, very deep, dark fucking secret. You know when he dies, they're gonna find the skins of young boys drying in his attic. <laughs> Clouds of horse flies going in and out of the eaves, and his wife will be on CNN hour after hour talking about Jesse's collection of little shoes. <laughs> I never understood that collection of little shoes he had. <laughs> Who's my favorite new kid? The first one that dies. <laughs> Johnny set up. <laughs> Any other setups you would like? <laughs> Jesse Helms. Jesse's against pornography. That's what he calls it. Pornography. Pornography. <laughs> I don't think you should be against anything until you can pronounce it. Am I being too harsh? What is pornography, man? No one knows. Supreme Court says pornography is any act that has no artistic merit and causes sexual thoughts. That's their definition, essentially. No artistic merit causes sexual thought. Hmm. Boy, that sounds like every commercial on television, doesn't it? You know, when I see those two twins on that double mint commercial, I'm not thinking of gum. <laughs> I am thinking of chewing. Maybe that's the connection they're trying to make there in a roundabout way. Man, you've all seen that Bush beer commercial. The girl in the short hot pants opens the beer bottle on her belt buckle, leaves it between her legs, it foams over the bottle and over her hand, and the voiceover goes, Get yourself a Bush. Hmm. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, that looks just no. No. The fine liquor company wouldn't try and implant that idea in my head, would they? Not the fine, upstanding liquor company. Commercial they'd like to do if they could, and I guarantee if they could, they'd do this right here. Here's the woman's face, beautiful. Camera pulls back, naked breast. Camera pulls back, she's totally naked. Legs apart, two fingers right here, and it just says, drink Coke. <laughs> the connection here. <laughs> God damn it, Coke getting on my shopping list this week. <laughs> Looks like I'm purchasing soda. <laughs> Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Snickers satisfying. <laughs> I'm buying these products. 
teeth are rotten out of my head. I'm glued to the television. I'm as big as a fucking couch. I'm buying the goddamn products. <laughs> more drinkers, more coal. <laughs> we want to keep these companies afloat. <laughs> You know what I find ironic? People that are against things that cause sexual thoughts are generally fundamentalist Christians who also believe you should be fruitful and multiply. <laughs> Boy, they walk a tightrope every day, don't they? <laughs> How do we be fruitful and multiply and yet not have sexual thoughts? I guess we could sing hymns during it. One stroke at a time, sweet Jesus, one stroke at a time, sweet Lord, one stroke at a time, we shall come. Overcome, overcome. If you overcome, you won't be fruitful and multiply. Though I like overcoming for its visual effect. Now, oh, I love everything about it, trust me. Just come here and enjoy my little fucking lust machine. I did that joke in Alabama, that we shall overcome joke or whatever that was, and these three rednecks met me after the show. Hey, buddy, come here. I met the comedian. Come here. Yeah, I love that move. Come here. Not a physics major. <laughs> I'm guessing, but I'll put money down if you want to bet. <laughs> Mr. Funny Man, come here. Hey, buddy, we're Christians. We don't like what you said. I said, then forgive me. <laughs> Later, when I was hanging from the tree, <laughs> I was hanging next to this little green fella. <laughs> Man, I don't care what you believe, you've got to admit beliefs are odd. You have to admit that they're odd. A lot of Christians wear crosses around their necks. You think when Jesus comes back, he ever wants to see a fucking cross? <laughs> going up to Jackie Onassis with a rifle pendant on. Just thinking of John, Jackie, just thinking of John. Just thinking of John. Not the way I want to be remembered. Okay. I realize I'm going to hell for this show, don't you? That's what this woman yelled in Alabama. You going to hell, boy? Yeah, fuck it, I'm already in Alabama, lady, whatever. <laughs> Say something that might scare me, like my return ticket is canceled. <laughs> nah, she don't tease. Okay, I have a question for y'all. For you all, y'all, you all, whoever you are alive. Y'all, okay. Y'all, I have a question for y'all. Now, the question I'm about to ask is going to sound, perhaps to some of you, rather crude and perhaps sexist. If it does, it's because it is. But, I'm asking for a friend. Now, here is my question. Are there actually women in the world who do not like to give blowjobs? Yes. yes. Why do I ask the question? Yes. Yes. The reason I ask, I'm with this woman one time. She goes down here for like three seconds, starts coming back up. And I'm going, oh. 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 Unless you're getting up to put ice in your mouth. Anyway, without getting graphic, she actually said to me, I think you've had enough. <laughs> really? You know what I think? 
I think you're gonna know when I finish. <laughs> yeah. Pretty definite ending here. Now, it blew my mind, it's all in blue. So I've been inquiring why. Because I have a lot of friends that are married, they're in couples, and why if you're with someone you love, would you have sexual barriers? Why wouldn't you do everything? I can't imagine why you don't have why don't you do why, how come you ladies don't like sucking your guys' dicks and making it the focal point of your existence while on this planet? <laughs> suck your own dicks. Ladies, you'd be in this room alone right now. <laughs> watching an empty stage. <laughs> Lonely night in Austin. Lonely night. Boy, my folks are proud of me, I think. <laughs> Bill, honey, you still doing that suck your own cock bit? <laughs> Yeah, Mom. Oh, thank goodness. It makes my bosom swell with pride, baby. My own boy I'm touring the country performing to suck his own cock bit. Oh, I'm proud of you. Your grandparents would be proud of you, too, baby, if they're still alive. See their grandson perform that suck his own cock bit. Woo, they'd be proud of you. They were alive. You had to put them in that Steven Seagal film. <laughs> Anyway, I asked that woman who yelled that, you ever try it? I said, let me ask you something. Why don't you like doing that to your guy? She goes, because it's disgusting. That's a tad harsh. <laughs> and also, I might add a double standard. Because you know what? I've never heard you ladies say it's disgusting. When we're down between your legs, gnawing away. <laughs> Ooh, this is so gross. <laughs> I'm going to throw up. <laughs> Don't put your finger in my hand. Oh, that's right. <laughs> You're making me ill. <laughs> I've never heard that. Ever. <laughs> then again, maybe I can't hear it because your thighs are clamped. <laughs> She's enjoying this. I'm getting a headache down here. And I feel like drinking a Coke, too. What the hell is that all about? <laughs> Honey, turn over. Wow, I feel like having a Snickers. <laughs> oh, Bill, we are... are you still doing the lick the asshole bit, too, honey? Please tell your mama to let her head rest easy on the pillow tonight. Son, all the people at church want to know when you're going to be performing in town. They all want to come out and see my boy perform the suck his own cock bit, followed by the lick the asshole sketch. <laughs> the preacher wants to talk to you after the show. I don't know what Father Swaggart has to say to you, but I believe he thinks of the utmost importance. Something about a man named Manny. Anyway. <laughs> We've come full circle. <laughs> Okay, folks, my final point. Too late. I wish you showed that kind of enthusiasm the first, ooh, hour 20 into the show. Now I think you're just using me. You got nowhere to go. You're homeless, aren't you, you bastards? We'll attend comedy club for food. I've seen your signs. Here is my final 
final point about drugs, alcohol, pornography, whatever that is. What business is it of yours, as long as I don't harm another human being, what business is it of yours when I buy, read, shoot, see, or do to myself? What business is it of yours? Let me answer the question for you in case you're having a little moral fucking conflict in your head. None of your fucking business. Yeah. But what is their response to that each and every time? But we have to protect the children. We have to protect the children. Let me tell you something real quick. Children are smarter than any of us. You know how I know that? I don't know one child with a full-time job and children. Quick, these kids. Brilliant. Right out of the womb, they're that smart. It's only after we get a hold of them that they're ruined irreparably. Where did this veneration of childbirth come from? I miss that fucking meeting, I'll tell you that. Childbirth is such a miracle. It's such a miracle. No, it's not. No more a miracle than eating food and a turd coming out of your ass. You know what a miracle is? A miracle is raising a kid who doesn't talk in a fucking movie theater, okay? That. That. That's a miracle. A miracle is raising a kid who doesn't run into my crotch at the supermarket because they have no peripheral vision. Where is that little miracle? Come here! <laughs> it's Beelzebozo time. Mommy! Who here has never been locked in a deep freezer? <laughs> I'm going to take you to Uncle Jesse's house. Mommy! <laughs> if it were a miracle, then not every nine months any yin-yang in the world could drop a litter of these mewling fucking cabbages on the planet. And in case you have not checked the single mom statistics lately, the miracle is spreading like fucking wildfire. <laughs> Hallelujah. Trailer parks all over America filling up with little miracles. Thunk. 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 Look at all my little miracles. Thunk. Filling up my trailer like a sardine can. Look at them. Thunk. You know what would be a real miracle? If I could remember your daddy's name. Thunk. I'm going to have to call you Trucker Jr. That's all I remember about your daddy was his fuzzy little pot belly riding on top of me, shooting his caffeine-ridden semen into my belly to produce my little waterhead miracle baby child. Thunk, there's your brother, Pizza Boy Delivery Jr. Thunk, there's your other brother, Terminator, Terminator Jr. Hallelujah. Well, folks, on that holiday note, Joy and to all of you. For, uh, good night. So on. So on. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. So long. So long.